Hello everybody and welcome to the World Cup second round match between Sprinter and Wolf Bainsons. Uh, Sprinter has won the toss and chose to receive in the pouring rain which is a little bit risky against Wood Owls. Wolf Bainsons with the Wood Owls and Sprinter doesn't play Champs Ladder. He was one of the three DBBC qualifiers and is German. <laughs> um, Wolf Bainsons qualified through Champs Ladder, uh, CCL 15, he was one of the top four. He's got a 73% win rate overall in Champs Ladder, and he's from Malta, so that's, that's interesting, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, yeah, Sprint, I don't really like receiving in the rain against Woodies. Against anybody, but particularly Woodies. I guess, in a way, it makes the Woodies recovery harder, so it's not so bad. But especially with elves, you might want to do some kind of passing or handing off desperation to get through the defense. So, yeah, I don't know about that. I think I think I would just naturally want to kick as well anyway in this match, but particularly with a rain. Um, Sprint has used his double on a guard blitzer. He's done it on a on a like a random one, not one with dodge. I mean, he's only got one with dodge, which I don't like anyway. I would have had two or three with dodge. But yeah, I think it's not good not having dodge on him. And there you go, he's used a reroll straight away because he doesn't have dodge on him. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is a three plus handoff, isn't it? If he goes with a handoff to get to the runner. Yeah, but risky business in the rain. Um, so yeah, I, I would rather have the guard on a dodge player. Um, but I'm, and obviously your only choice is the blitzer because you would want like you blow on the witch elf, or you just wouldn't have guard on the witch elf. It's stupid. <laughs> Wolf Bainsons has gone for mighty blow on his dancer, so he is going to make sixteen blocks with mighty blow this match, pretty much guaranteed. Maybe he'll obviously the tackle mighty blow guy might get cast, or he might try a strip ball hit. But all things being equal, he's going to make sixteen blocks with mighty blow, and you know that. Uh, Basically, it means both teams are armor seven now, doesn't it? So, almost because the dark elves aren't going to give too many hits. So, it's a great equalizer, mighty blow. But again, it's, oh, it's a random lucky skill, isn't it? You would have got absolute value, guaranteed value from guard somewhere. But I certainly understand wanting to go mighty blow tackle because I've done it. <laughs> And I do like his wrestle, his wrestle lineman, for sure. Yeah, this tee, this tree's in a good spot, isn't it? Very good. I like, I like the defense here, the the kind of diagonals so they don't get surfed. Um, I mean they're not in range anyway, but do you know what I mean. If they were, the whole diagonal defense is quite cool. Trees in a good spot. Even if he roots, he, he's just doing the job, isn't he? Stopping them. Field control, isn't it? Nine squares. Or really more five because of uh, elves. So these squares aren't so good. But these ones, they don't run a three plus two plus three. Right? So trees are good. Even without, even without murdering things with mighty blow. Which, you know, they sometimes do. So yeah, now he's kept this diagonal thing. And there'll be no surfing there unless he rolls some crazy dodges. Blocking in around the block, I like that. So that completely shuts down even the lucky dodge surf now, doesn't it? So Trying to switch sides a bit, probing, probing around, looking for a weakness or something. Maybe a lucky removal. I 
I think it's still quite important that the Dark Elves protect the ball. Obviously, they've got the uh, they've got the luxury of dump off, very useful against Wood Elves. But still, you don't want to have to use it, do you? Especially in the rain. Oh, he's going to go there. And then he's starting to go a bit further. And this is one of the many decisions you're going to make as what else, isn't it? Um, this is a 4 plus dodge with dodge for a 1 dice on the ball. Um, now, I, I wouldn't go for it. I wouldn't, I'd, And the reason I don't like it is because you can dump off to someone in the hard tackle zone. If you could have put a tackle zone on the Witch Elf, which you can't really. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. No, I can't really. If you could have put a tackle zone on the Witch Elf, then maybe it's worth it. But... Um, you know, he doesn't have to, is it? It's early days to go for a cage dive like that, but you'll have had to have at least thought about it for a second. Yeah, the tree in there's pretty awesome. Also, he could have just blitzed. Blitzed this guy or something. Blitzing the guard, wouldn't have hated. Wouldn't have hated blitzing the guard. I guess he's going to blitz this line in now. No mighty blow needed, but it's the thought that counts, isn't it? And he's done the same thing these three in a row, completely not allowing any kind of surfing action from the witch elf. I mean, I, I can see the point of not starting all of your blitzes with, with, that, with uh, dodge. Because it would give you the chance of a tackle knight and blow down. Um, but it just, I really don't like the guard without dodge. It's a nice lucky Kaz. I mean, it's still lucky, isn't it? You know, although, although Wood Elves are armor 7, they don't have to get brutally outbashed every game. Um, it's one of the great fallacies, I think, that, that you know, Woodies are super risky because they, they might get brutally outbashed. Everyone can get brutally outbashed. And... Uh, Yes, of course, Woodies are more likely to get brutally outbashed than, for example, Dark Elves or plus one armor on everybody and an apple. But it's still quite easy for anyone to get brutally outbashed, isn't it? Like the single game, the single game variance is huge. Yes, in the long run, it's a, uh, you know, it's a big deal. But in any single game, it's mostly just the dice. I do. I like the way he's playing this for instance. I mean, he has. He is one of the few people with a win rate of over seventy-three percent, of over seventy percent. Even his, his is seventy-three. But there weren't many people over seventy percent in the in the tournament. Not that it means a whole lot, you know. Sprint is still a good coach, but I just like I like looking at the uh, the champs ladder stats just because it's better than it's literally better than nothing, isn't it? It's not super reliable or super relevant or anything like that, but it's just literally gives you more idea than no idea. <laughs> Going full Venger bus here to stop the leap in for a one dice. And that was an important screen to make because otherwise he could have come around the back. But I mean, he's, he's not going to, is he? He's maybe overprotecting the ball here. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that against Wood Elf. Another KO. Again, not Mighty Blow. So he's made a couple of KOs, hasn't needed Mighty Blow on either of them. But it's, it's still as every every turn he's made five blocks with a mighty blow, hasn't he? Every blitz has been with a mighty blow player. So it, it is a, it is a quite a big deal. Well, the dark elves aren't really getting anywhere, are they? Pretty important dodge to make there, because could have definitely got through with a push there. Scott. 
scoring threat. <laughs> Bad, bad double one there, wasn't it? Double score. Only one reroll left. I mean, Dark Elves are quite reroll light, aren't they? That is the one thing. If they roll some bad block dice, it can punish them a bit. Um, Wolf Bainson's went for two rerolls and no apple. And uh, Sprinter went for two rerolls and an apple. So, wow. Well, Wolf Bainson went for two rerolls plus leader. So he went for three rerolls. And Sprinter could have either gone for three rerolls or two rerolls and an apple. And I think all three Dark Elves were the same and went for two rerolls and an apple. And, you know, that, that's the thing. You, you're you not trying to do anything risky, really, with, with Dark Elves. You just want to give, get as many as you can blodged up. Oh, he's got leader. Ignore what I say about the two rerolls. <laughs> Leader's always an option, I guess, for them. But, um... All right. Mostly people have gone for dodge and two rerolls, which is pretty pretty tricky. Pretty tricky. And already now it's turn six, and Sprint has just not really got anything going, has he? Mighty Blow not having any effect. <laughs> Not sure I like the uh, dancer move before the tree arts because he wanted a GFI. Because if the tree had rooted, this would have been very weak, wouldn't it? That would have been a big blitz through. And up here, I think. So yeah, this is this is tricky, isn't it? Either he rolls a bunch of dice to try and get forward. Or he kind of plays it safe. And he's playing it safe. What's very sneaky about this is the Witch Elf is actually a scoring threat because of jump up. So three, six, seven, eight, nine. She can score with two GFIs. Which is something that a lot of people would miss, I bet. I like that he's got the option for this one over here. The problem is, of course, the rain, isn't it? It's going to make any... He's only got two scoring... Well, three scoring threats. And uh, one blitz to try and do something. He's going to have a tree on the ball as well. Play here then. Um, no, let, let's let's let go here. The play here was to blitz this catcher um, with the with with uh, with the witch elf. One, two, three, you know, whatever. So there's a space here. Then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. GFI pass or wherever he would get to. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. GFI pass to this this guy in the end zone, isn't it? That's the play. Um, he gets the push in the first one and the pow. Oh no, not a pow! So that stops that that dodge through, doesn't it? Um, he should have hit here and pushed down. He could have hit from here and pushed down, couldn't he? Yeah. Should have pushed down. And in, in, instead he goes for the handoff into a long pass. Still got the last re-roll. Love 
fails it. Rain does him. It was a two. But yeah, I think he played from the wrong direction there, didn't he? Otherwise, that was that was for sure the player doing a quick pass instead of a long one. But I mean, I guess he would have failed the catch anyway. But you can't you can't base your decisions on you know like you know the, I think that still was the optimal play for sure was to just blitz from the wrong angle, didn't he? Because he could have got he could have gotten them down there. Hmm. So successful defence from by Wolf Bainsons. I mean, it was quite good. He was doing this diagonal thing all the time and just trading blitzers, mighty blow for a nothing blitz. So they were basically on a seven anyway. Lucky that not unlucky that he failed the dodge, but lucky that his dancer didn't die there. Terrifying every time a war dancer's knocked over. <laughs> so yeah, it makes it a hard time and. They're equal on bash. And now the Wood Elves have two Mighty Blow players. And the Dark Elves have none. So, yeah, pretty scary for the for the Dark Elves, having failed their offense, basically. Wood Elves, of course, are going to have to stall it. You know, pretty much. You don't wanna, Like, if they have to leave Dark Elves with a chance to score, they have to, but... They're really going to want to uh, stall it out to turn it if they possibly can. The good old offset LOS here. <laughs> I think it's a pretty fair, fair tactic with Dark Elves. It's fair with Wood Elves as long as you, there's a play you don't mind getting Blitz that, that you can expose heavily. Yeah, Wolf Benson's actually been the downer player. Sets up not great, really, but good enough, I guess. So again, he's made the decision to screen the ball and then pick it up rather than bring it up and into one mass. I don't really like. I don't really like splitting a team, even when you're elves. You don't really want to get your team split for no reason. And uh, yeah, I think he could have just screened higher up. I guess he's a touch scared of the witch elves. But he could have still screened higher up and then, you know, anticipate. Yeah. Him. You want to be close to the center, don't you? Closer to the center is is key, basically. Just gives you so many more options to move. And this having these guys, you know, down near a sideline. These close together. This has got a screen here. And a screen there. So the the dark hills are slow and they can only go one way, but um, it's a bit didn't like it. I mean it worked out okay because he failed to pick up and then caught it. But I, I would have rather seen this screen higher up the pitch, basically. I mean, if he gets into trouble, he can just dodge away because he's an elf. So, you know. Being able to make a dodge 35 times out of 36 
is a lot better than eight times out of nine. It's only two plus to get through here. So maybe you could have even got the witch out through as well. Could have got maybe even more players really gone, really gone ham. Because the wood elves, if the wood elves score early, the dark elves can just equalize, can't they? So maybe you could have gone ham, tried to get loads of players in between. But he gives him kind of a link up here, doesn't he? I guess he was scared of a of a cage dive, but I'm not sure I can endorse handing off like that. Because <laughs> that was essential reroll, wasn't it? But I mean he gets it on a blodge, strength three blodger instead of a strength two dodger. You'd obviously rather have it on your dancer. It's just having to reroll the one. Pinning his team to the sideline isn't very good either. This is looking up for the Dark Elves. Tree's pretty much away from you'd rather I think you'd rather have the tree central. I think you'd rather always be central just because it gives you so many more options. You know, two sides for the defense to cover. Um Yeah. Couple of stuns making things a bit more tricky for the woodies. Base in the ball. We all love that. <laughs> I mean, the Woodies have got plenty of time, haven't they? It is turn 10, so they probably welcome the pressure a bit as long as they don't lose. As long as they don't lose from it. <laughs> it's pretty good, isn't it? You could, you could block him, fish for a pal. And then if he gets it, now the mighty bow can blitz the other one. He even gets a kill. On a blodger? How's new blodger? Yeah, I can blitz this one with a mighty blow. And then just screen off. I'm surprised he did it that way, I would have. I would have moved the ball like back further a bit, I think. We just go for this blitz. Because you can kind of make a screen, can't you? From it? I, think, I think that's what I would have done, but again, pros and cons. Not, not saying he's wrong for doing what he did. The leader reroll has been used, so this wouldn't have been so good if he'd pushed him on the sideline. Base is the ball. <laughs> Maybe this is the time to just put everyone into contact. Make the uh, elves roll dice. I think it would have maybe been better to just stand in between those to base them both with one, one character and then the witch elf could have got a bit further forward maybe. Oh, he's getting fought with a blitzer. Okay. Pretty good turn. This is tricky now for the woodies. Why is he mighty go tackle the witch elf? Hey. Fails a 
dodge, but it doesn't really matter, so... Yeah, this is pretty safe, like, isn't it? Um, five plus to dodge in. Could go for it. Oh, especially as it's a one dice into a two dice, isn't it? Dodges in here, gets a push, then it's a two dice because of, of the guard. He's going to go for it. Witch Elf with Wrestle. It's a skull. <laughs> he rolls a skull. Oh man. Now the woodies can just, just clear off over here, can't they? I think that's one of the few times when I've played somebody who's already in contact. Just because obviously hitting with Night and Blow. Ooh. And uh, and then these two could win the screen. Not getting the knockdown makes it a lot harder to run over there. So he's just going to cage. Cage here. I don't like not a tight cage because that gives him the 4 plus dodging unless he's tempting him on purpose but 4 plus dodging there seems pretty worthwhile like he tried the 5 plus last turn so you know he's going to try the 4 plus this turn gets his leader KO'd not too bothered So we could put the guard either in here or in here. Yeah, puts him there. And the witch elf can come in on a four plus. One dice into two again. <laughs> Third skull in a row. Oh my god. <laughs> Finally gets the push, and then gets the pow. Obviously pushes to there. Bounce to here. No. Oh well, catching it's all right. Could think about fouling the strip dancer. One, two, three, four, five, six. With the last one maybe. Which elf here, and then he goes one, two, three, four, five, six. Gets a foul. On. I wouldn't hate it. I think I maybe would have fouled there. Just because if you w if you score you win, don't you? And strip is the main way he's getting the ball off you. I know he doesn't have dodge, but he's got a tackle there anyway. Even if he did. One dice block, and he gets the wrestle. <laughs> That's pretty lucky to get a two dice block. Because, uh, I mean, you needed a power push wouldn't have worked. And now, Wood Elves being Wood Elves. <laughs> I'm going to run away eight squares. <laughs> Pass it to the other one. <laughs> And then dodge away and score. Well, yep, Sprinter had put Wolf Bainson's in a hole there, hadn't he? Um, I think he did a really good job to make him do that. But there you go, that's some elf BS, isn't it? Move the ball from one end of the pitch to the other. I mean, it was so close to being a defensive touchdown for the young, for the young dead, for the dark elves, and then boom, it's one 0 for the Woodies. They've somehow hardly taken any any cars. In fact, they've it's nine aside. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the three turns, Dark Elves can definitely score in three turns, for sure. So, it's not, it's not looking rosy at all. But, it's looking better than it could have been. <laughs> it's looking a lot better than being one. You'd rather be one of one nil up than one nil down, wouldn't you? <laughs> At this stage of the game.
best best sprint you can hope for is overtime. And he is setting up for like the passing play, fair enough. Oh man. This could actually this could actually this blitz could actually hurt Wolf Bainson's here because you know he's he's taking people kind of out of position, isn't he, a bit? Wants to pressure the ball. Presumably. Oh, that was a one. Doesn't re roll it because he's only got one. That's a that's a cruel bounce, I think, for Sprinter, because if it had gone the other way, he could have picked it and passed it without having to uh, clear clear this player, but now he's got to use his blitz to clear the wrestler there. And with a blitz he can't hold on to it. He could have held on to this if there wasn't a blitz in his backfield, but now he just has to pass it. Without a re-roll. <laughs> and there's the one. Brutal. I mean, that's really brutal, isn't it? It could have easily... You could have easily just not had a blitz and been able to hold on to it in the backfield. Or not rolled two ones out of, out of well, three or four or five dice rolls, however many it was. Um, and if you got the ball there and dodged out and everything, you could have had it in a strong, strong cage, but... Without re-rolls, everything is super scary, isn't it? Super scary without re-rolls. Three dice with mighty blow. Nothing. <laughs> I like the strip as the the stripper as the safety there. Makes a lot of sense if the uh, if the shit hits the fan, <laughs> you just need a push to to stop it. Maybe we'll just dodge him. Let's hold it. I'll dodge the witch off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You've got to do something just in case there's a turnover, haven't you? And really, the witch elves would be the only one with dodge. It's pretty brutal though. And there's another one. And that's all she rolled, no scoring threats. Um, maybe you can chain this. Wow. Maybe you could chain the Witch Elf forward, but really, really unlikely. I probably shouldn't have followed there to make it you know, a bit less likely. But, um,. A very interesting battle, really, quite tactical. Not too many removals, so you know, people were making decisions that were, you know, relevant all game long. They weren't just blasted off the park like some of the teams have been. A lot of ones, I think, overall for Sprinter. But, you know, I think he did misplay the, the touchdown, I think. I couldn't. I didn't. I didn't see whether whether he could have diff blitz from a different angle. To be honest, I'll put it in the description whether he could have done. Um, but if he could have blitzed from that angle, then that was definitely the player to dodge through there and do like a pass to here, rather than the handoff and pass. But you know, it still was likely to work even in the range. So, but it it was still well defended by Wolf Bainsons. You know, it, no matter how you defend against elves, they're going to be able to roll some two plus and three plus to get out of it, aren't they? That's the thing, no matter what you do, elves will always be able to roll some dice. And, uh, you know, Sprinter did a good defense, you know, he, he got the ball out on another day, it would have bounced kinder for him and he could have recovered and scored. Um, but it is what it is, you know, at the end of the day, it was a good good game of elves. And uh, yeah, not a ton of armor breaks, so it was quite tactical and not really decided by the dice. I think, you know, it was just a good game. So congrats to both, and well done Wolf Bainsons for getting through. Thanks for watching, if you enjoyed it don't forget to leave a like and subscribe.
and stay fantastic.